guys, it's Lita. So, um, this is that, sorry about my uh, empty room, by the way. This is uh, that one video that I was telling you guys I would make about um, my experience while I was offline. As most of you know, I do choose to be pretty open about um, my past and my, like, just how I got through things and stuff, just because I want to um, help some of you go through the same, or get through the same things, um, because, I don't know, some, sometimes you just feel like you have uh, no direction or anything, so um, hopefully a video like this will help anyone who's going through a similar issue. So basically, what led me to um, leave YouTube in the first place is that I had had ongoing depression, um, that I had gotten to severe depression for three years, um, in addition to anxiety. I had gotten medication for the anxiety about um, two years ago, or a little over two years ago, uh, but I didn't think about depression as a factor, uh, and I just kind of wanted to take care of it for myself. I wanted to be able to overcome it without the help of medication or a therapist or something. So I was just kind of being really stubborn and didn't take it as seriously as I should have. And it kind of crept up on me because I didn't even really realize that I was depressed. Um, so what happened was um, on just, I think it was like August 27th or something that I deleted my channel and everything. Um, on that day, I had been told that there was like some really, 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 really negative comments going on in my videos, which um, happened a lot. But for some reason, just that day, I completely snapped. Like I literally just, my psychological like well-being just kind of just crumbled um, while I was at Target, actually. And, you know, it was just like a huge episode of hysteria all of a sudden. And so... Um, my mom spent some time calming me down and then I came home and made the decision that I was going to delete all of my sites because I just needed to disappear. It was like I couldn't handle it anymore. I felt like it, it felt like literally everyone hated me because I know I know that's not the case at all. Um, it's just that I had I really, really desperately needed help and didn't get it. So at this point, um, like almost like 95 percent of my thoughts were completely irrational. Um, so first lesson, if you think that you do have depression, please go get help for it because it can get really, really, really bad. Now, um, for the first like two days after deleting all of my websites, it was, uh, I felt a lot better. My head was like pretty clear, um, but I still hadn't gotten help for like actual mental like illness, psychological problems. Um, but then after about two days is when things got a million times worse. Um, basically, I started having these, like, mild hallucinations almost, you know, like, yeah, it was, it was like mild auditory and um, visual hallucinations, <clears throat> and I had no idea where they were coming from. It was, it was super, it wasn't even, like, YouTube related or anything. It was just that, like, I would have these, like, horrible, horrible, like, I can't even describe how horrible they were, images of, um, <clears throat> like, the people I love getting killed, and, like, it was really, really graphic, and, like, or, or me getting killed. For some reason, I was living that, you know, like, every, every single thing that I would think of, I would live it, like, I would, I wouldn't be able to tell if I was in my head or, uh, in reality, um, so it got <laughs> really, really bad, um, and that, this was like a constant thing, like it was just like constant hysteria and confusion, like I was just completely delirious basically. Um, and I found out the first time I went to my psychiatrist, which was about a month, maybe two weeks, two weeks, yeah it was about a month actually, um, after I deleted all of my sites. Um, my psychiatrist said that such a huge change in my life, which was leaving YouTube, um, instead of doing me good, it had actually sparked um, some, like a mild case of PTSD. Uh, at that point it was severe, but um, my antidepressants are also used to slightly treat uh, 
PTSD patients. I mean, there's no like actual treatment for it, but um, it helps with the symptoms. Um, so there was that, and then there was also a depersonalization or derealization disorder, um, which is where you kind of just don't feel like you're real. You don't feel like anything that's happening around you is real, uh, and that. I go through like week-long periods where I feel like that. I just kind of feel like a pair of eyes. And then depression, of course, and anxiety. Uh, the medication didn't really work for quite a while. It started working, I think, after about a week. Um, but I mean, I mean, that doesn't seem like a very long time, but um, for me, it was a super long time. <laughs> a week was way, way too long to wait. Um, so. Uh, I mean, it started getting, like, a lot better, um, at, before I had started taking my medication, I couldn't even leave the house, like, I didn't leave the house for, like, a whole month, because I was afraid that I was gonna die. It, it, like, every single thing around me, I thought was gonna kill me. Um, and every morning when my mom would go to work, I would start crying then too, like hysterically, because I thought that it was the last time I was ever gonna see her, um, because I thought that something was gonna kill her too. And like, there was, there were points where, um, like, we went to the grocery store together, and she went in the grocery store, and I just like, completely lost it in the car, because I decided to stay in the car. Um, I completely lost it while she was in the grocery store, because I thought that I, I like, was thoroughly convinced somehow that um, there was a gunman in the grocery store and that I would, wasn't gonna see her again. So basically it was just like I completely lost it. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really good thing that I left, um, even though it, it technically made things a little bit worse for a while, but um, I think I needed to go through that in order to come back. Um, luckily, now, things are actually completely better. Well, like, not completely. I, there's still, like, some remaining minor issues, but, you know, like, I can tell, like, what's what's what now, and um, I can focus and go out and do stuff. In fact, I actually get all, like, squirmy if I don't go out and do stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, the thing is that um, when I was going through all of this, I really genuinely thought I would never ever get out and there was, I've never really in my life, except for one other time, thought that I would be just better off dead but at the same time I was, um, I was really conflicted because I was afraid of death so I was like, okay, uh, I feel like I shouldn't be alive but at the same time I am terrified of dying and so, um, it was like, that was like constantly what was going through my head. It was just like, I just want to disappear. It was kind of just like living a nightmare. Um, even though technically the things around me were fine, um, my conditions were fine, it was just what was going on in my head that was just destroying me. Um, which I mean, that's what a mental illness is. Uh, so, what I basically wanted to say, um, is in the end I had to make some minor life changes um, and major life changes and you know cut certain people out bring certain people back in um, things like that uh, and then I'm moving you know so um, all of those things contributed to making me better um, and like I said it's still, like, I've still got a long, like, road ahead of me for this, but, um, I'm at the point where I can completely control myself, pretty much. There are times when I get, like, some crazy anxiety and stuff, but I can pretty much get myself out of it after a while. Um, but basically, if you're in a situation like that, um, if words even help, because I know, uh, for me, I don't think words could have helped. I couldn't even help myself, <laughs> um, and neither could anyone else <clears throat> at that time. But um, if you're going through a similar situation where you aren't sure whether you even want to be here or not, um, or if you 
can't tell who the hell you are or who the hell, you know, what's going on or anything like that. If you, basically, if you're suffering from any mental illness, just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, because um, although there are a lot of mental illnesses that aren't curable, um, they are treatable. So, and it, it's, it does get easier to cope with the more that you, uh, the more that you try. Um, and I just really, really had to keep the belief in my head. That's one thing, that's one trick that I've used my entire life, is just believe that it'll happen, and it'll most likely happen. You know, you just have to be like very, very, very hooked on the, the idea that it's gonna happen. So I would always tell myself like, I have to keep going, you know, there's, there's something ahead of me. So just keep in mind that you can do it. Um, there's gonna be like countless times where you tell yourself that you can't. Um, trust me, that's all I would tell myself for, like that entire period of time was that I couldn't do it. But there was just something like in the back of my head that was like, come on. You know, you've always been able to do it. Like, don't let this shit stop you. So just tell yourself the same thing. Just be like, I can beat this. I gotta do it. <laughs> like, I have to do it. Um, and you'll be extremely proud of yourself afterwards, honestly. I mean, like, um, I, can't, I can't believe that I made it through that. And also, another thing I wanted to mention is don't be ashamed to talk about things like this. Um, like, if, like, no matter if it's like a physical disability or like a mental disability or a mental illness or you know just some sort of ailment um it's i don't really think it's anything to be ashamed of it's just a part of who you are that's another thing that helped me cope with it was that i acknowledged um the depression and the ptsd and the anxiety and everything um i acknowledged it as a part of me but yeah so uh that's that's why i had to leave i was just really um not stable uh, whatsoever. Um, like I said, if you feel like you might have something wrong with you, go check it out because um, a psychiatrist or a therapist can tell you um, and it's good to get it taken care of before it gets completely out of hand. Um, believe me. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm back and I'm glad to be back uh, and I feel better than I have in years actually. Uh, like I said, I had ongoing depression and anxiety for over three years and now it's like I'm able to cope with it a little bit. I'm still on medication and I still have like some treatment stuff to do um, but you know I feel great <laughs> and I, I haven't had this much fun or smiled this much or like been this carefree in a long time and I'm glad to be back. So. Um, I hope that that did help some of you guys because I know that a lot of you uh, do have problems of this or like this of your own. Um, actually, I'm sure the majority of you do. I mean, like most everyone has their own issues whether they show it or not. So um, if you are going through something tough that is similar to what I went through, um, then I really hope that this was able to uh, give you an insight on how I beat it. Uh, you just gotta really, really, really hang on there and, uh, kick its ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, alright. Well, uh, like I said, I'm glad to be back. I missed you guys more than anything. Like, yeah, I literally have tingles, like, in my boobs, honestly. Honestly, my boobs are tingling because I'm excited. <laughs> okay, I love you guys and I will see you again soon. Okay. I love you. You're all my little special babies. Okay, bye.